Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahushai, Bahasham, Rakahat, Badash. Double honors unto the apostles. Double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. The 144,000 and the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth among the heathen that look like those heathen. This isn't a black thing. And to the few Akwaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolma from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you another lesson in truth. And I'm going to start with uh, Baruch 2 and I'm going to read 29 through 35. And it reads, If you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall, become, shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Applicable word, remember themselves. All right. <clears throat> and shall know that I am the Lord, their power. For I will give them a heart, meaning a mind, and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. And return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their, their fathers, which have sinned before Yahweh. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their father, their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them and they shall not be dismissed. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them in their and to be their power and shall be, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people out of Israel, out of the land that I have given them. Surely. Mr. Marcus Eli Ravage here. And his people do not fit that. All right. Because according to him, he's always known who he, who, who, who he is. He didn't have to remember himself. He didn't have to think upon the name. All right. And there are prophecies about the name still. So that's going to be the name of this, this title. Iconoclasm and the name stillers. And I'm going to prove both points have happened. And I'm going to prove through scripture and history that both points were both, both things were done by this man and his people. All right. Because what he doesn't do is he doesn't. I'm going to read from his book, which I'm holding in my hand. All right. All right. I'm going to read from his book. Uh, or it actually wasn't even a book. This was an article that they made into a book that was printed in 1928. I believe. Yeah. January 1928. It was published in the Century Magazine. It's probably going to be the. Uh, and I just wanted to finish this book. It's a very short article. Um, but, uh, well, not a short article. It's actually a long article. But mixed with other things and other books and scriptures, you know, I kind of drug this thing along to get all points out of it, to get all the meat off the bone. And one thing that, uh, that they don't do is they don't acknowledge uh, the fact that they are the people who are... Who are uh, who took on the law, statutes, and commandments, all right, actually was forced upon them by John Hyrcanus, all right, um, the, who was uh, in the family of the Maccabees. And that you had a sect of the Edomites who became Jewish. These, and, and what happens is that the name stealers, and I'm going to read about them, I, I Googled, I went to DuckDuckGo, not Google, but I went to DuckDuckGo, I mean, some of this will probably be found on Google too. But I went to DuckDuckGo and um, just put in name stealers and all these articles popped up. Some of them from Wikipedia, some of them from other sources. But I just want to read some of them. Uh, first source is uh, a veteran uh, from VeteransDay.com. It says, the, the history of the incredibly evil Khazarian Mafia. Eventually, the Khazarian king and his small surrounding court infiltrated Germany, a group that chose the name, 
the bowers of, Ger of Germany. Wow. See, I didn't even click into it. And the elder apostles talk about the bowers. I'm just reading the, the, you know, the title of it and I haven't clicked on it. I might have to go back and look at this later on. It says, uh, the next one was ascensionglossary.com. And I'll show these on the screen. You know. The next one is ascensionglossary.com. And it reads, uh, the Khazar kingdom began to be described as the kingdom of the Jews by historians that were intentionally rewriting history for Khazarians uh, who became... Basically, they became the new sect of Jewish people, uh, picking up where their forefathers had left off before the fall of Rome, before and 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 before uh, the Israelites were uh, were trodden down by uh, uh, by Titus. Okay. Um, the next one is this is a Wikipedia one. Uh, the next one is the Republic of, uh, oh, here we go. The Republic of, uh, Tatarson, the Khazars were a nomadic Turkic people. Uh, well, didn't mean to do all that. Went too far over. Uh, were nomadic Turkic people in the late 6th century. Established major commercial empires. See, so they want to ignore all this written history by so many sources. The Khazarian Mafia, a.k.a. the name still is fake. Wow. Won't say that word. Classic video from Cliff's about Cliff High about the Khazarian name stillers are they are not the J-double-O's, but they surround themselves with sacrificial J-double-O's. OK, um, here's the next one. And this is, and, and all this information is coming from their own kind. All right. You got to remember, um, you know, Arthur Kostler and who's the guy that uh, Charles Wiseman, the, the author of, of Who is Esau Edom? These are their own people who wrote this. Oxford, it's is Yiddish language name stealers on YouTube. Oxford says the language of the name stealers. This is a combination of prototype of, of European, Indo-European, see Indian, India. All right. Told it, 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 uh, you know, Asia, Eurasia, it, they, they just lie about everything. All right, let's jump down to the next one. Russia is eliminating the Khazarian, Khazarian mafia in Ukraine. Okay, so let's, that's enough on that. But just, you get, you get the point. You get the gist of it. All right. Uh, many of their own kind have wrote about them and wrote against them. And that, that fulfilling the scripture, fulfilling the prophecy, um, because, you know, the, the apostles and the elder bishops are always saying, you know, return to the prophecies, bring out the prophecies. Because the truth of the matter is, is that truth is the biggest weapon against lies. And these people have been found to be liars. All right. And their tongues fall upon themselves. Uh, I would say probably about 95 percent of the information uh, that's on the Internet about them is from their own people. All right. We just go and read it, research it. But Psalm 68 or 64 and 8, not 68. It reads, So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. All right. And then I'm going to jump up to verse verse uh, uh, two. And it reads, I was verse one. And, and this is and this was written by David. All right. And it reads, hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve me, preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, and words and documents and papers and false fraudulent history, omitted history, has been their way of, of ruling and controlling. So I'm going to go into the book now because this is definitely going to be a multiple part video because in the second part, I'm going to go into a video that uh, that, that Cudi Merrill just put up recently proving how during the time, how how, how they were committing our, our uh, iconoclasm. And it showed you the evidence 
uh, of doing it, you know, during the time of the Renaissance. How they started uh, taking uh, people in history who were definitely men of color, you know, swarthy men, all right? Not black men. Black is a social construct. Remember that. We can't push that. We hear at the Great Millstone from the Elder Apostles on down. We can't push enough, you know, that, that you know, blackness and whiteness are false social constructs, which they created to control. As a matter of fact, all the racial prototypes today that are used, you know, uh, European, Indo-Asian and all the, uh, you know, white, black, you know, Hispanic, Latin X, you know, all these these false terms. These all these were created to get away from the biblical identities that the Lord gave to all men. Because uh, because Esau Edom um, is trying to hide from, you know, from who they are. You know, they be, they became Greeks. They became Romans. You know, they became uh, uh, Caucasians. And and now they become whites and some of them became J double O's. All right. Which happens to be the elites, you know, the, the, the uh, among them, because it, it tells you that Amalek would be the first of the nations and Amalek kind of uh, abused his brethren and hogged the blessing. He hogged Isaac's blessing because if Abraham is their forefather and Isaac is their forefather, but Jacob is not. They are from Jacob's twin brother Esau, all right? So they're, they're Jacob, Isaac, and Esau. We are Jacob, Isaac. We are, we are well, I'm sorry, we are Abraham. Uh, uh, they are Jacob, they are Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. We are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right? Which is how that was supposed to come out. But I'm going to start reading from page 22 in this book. I have 21 at the bottom because I stopped in the, in the first paragraph. So I'll read the second paragraph and, and read down to uh, two, two, two short pages. But it says, uh, how do we do it? Question mark. Almost by accident. 2,000 years ago, and he's bragging about having control. All right. That's basically what he's, he's bragging about. How we've, you know, taken control we rule your governments from behind the scenes or rule over your world from behind the scenes, from the side, basically. And have front men that do all the dirt for them. And, and that's exactly true. That's what he's bragging about. But um, And then he says, uh, how did we do it? Almost by accident, 2,000 years ago, nearly a, in a far off Palestine, our religion had fallen into decay and materialism. Money changes when possession of the temple. Degenerate selfish priests uh, mulked our people and grew fat. That's kind of happening today with some of these, with a, you know, with a few camps I can think of. These are uh, uh, merchandising camps that sell breakdowns, sell garments, and you know, T-shirts and all that other stuff that, that, <laughs> that sell false doctrine. All right. And one of those things is that you cannot have multiple wives, which you can biblically. All right. It's not. It's it's not. Uh, you know, it's not always wise to do it in this society. But then it also can have some benefits in this society for those who do do it. But it's definitely within the law of our culture that you can have multiple wives. All right. Uh, the, the fact that they teach you one is that is, that's that Judeo-Christian doctrines. All right. Which are false. All right. It said degenerate, selfish priests uh, mulcted our people and grew fat. Then a young patriot, idealist, arose up and went about. And he's talking about Yahawashai. The land calling for a revival of the faith. Basically, Yahweh came to restore his people to, to, to actually preach the kingdom of heaven coming. And the kingdom of heaven is, is, is the Israelites, not just the J, not just the, the J words, but all 12 tribes uh, being the new government of the earth. And, and, and particularly 12,000 men from, from, uh, from each of the 12 tribes being the new government that's going to rule over all people in the earth. Right, and the Israelites would be set above all people and rule in righteousness, and the world would actually be set back in order. That's the ki the kingdom of heaven. All right. So it wasn't a revival of the faith. He was preaching the kingdom of heaven. So this guy, you know, he's 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 being disingenuous with his information. And it says, uh, he said he went throughout the land calling for the revival of faith. He had no thought for setting up a new church like all the prophets before him 
His only aim was to purify and revitalize the old creed. True. He attacked the priests and drove the money changers from the temple. This brought him into the conflict with the established order and, and, and its supporting pillars. Basically, just like the men of the Great Millstone were coming into conflict with the established order and its supporting pillars. Its supporting pillars are some of these very other uh, camps, these 501c3 camps, you know. It says uh, because they're teaching doctrines that 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 the teaching doctrines of devil and things that aren't profitable spirit spiritually. The Roman authorities, who were in occupation of the country, fearing his revolution agitation as a political effort to oust oust them, arrested him, tried him, and condemned him to death by crucifixion, a common form of execution at the time. They put you on an X, which is a cross. All right, two T's form two 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 uh. uh Two wooden beams that came from a tree, all right? When they crossed them, created an X or a T, and that's the way it's used. It was an X, actually, more than a T, in, in all honesty. And they, and, and though, because here's an image of a of a cross, if we just turn it right there, and if you look at it, it's, you know, it's really an X. You see, it just turned the X up on one end. So, um... But it says, uh, the followers of Yahweh Shah of Nazareth, I'm not, I'm not going to say that J word, mainly slaves and poor workmen, because the Israelites were under captivity, this part is true, in bereavement and disappointment, turned away from the world and formed themselves into a brotherhood, uh, a pacifist, now resist to sharing the memory of their crucified leader and living together communalistically. They were merely a new sect of, of Judea without power or consequence, neither the first nor the last. And and so this portion is true, except for the fact that this is not his people. All right. Okay. And, and it was in Antioch where they first began to call them followers of the anointed one. You know, that's because that's what Christ actually means. You know, when you break it down, anointed. So they were called Christians. All right. And it was the Israelites. All right. It wasn't all people. All right. And it said, after the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans, did the new creed come into prominence? Then a patriotic J double O, he's actually a Benjamite, all right, named Paul or Saul, conceiving the idea of humbling the Roman power by destroying the moral of its solidarity with the doctrine of love and non resistance preached by the little sect of the J is Christian. So he's a, so this is the most truth he's told in this whole book. He said the little sect of Jewish Christians is letting you know that the, this right here lets you know. I'm going to put that up to the screen. All right. The non-resistance preached by the little sect of Jewish Christians. The Christians were Israelites. Okay. It says, who became the apostle of the Gentiles? So wait a minute. How did it jump to the Gentile? Because it, how, how is that? Well, that's when we read, we read uh, John 7 and 35, all right? Which, you know, in John 7 and 35, let me, let me grab it real quick. Matter of fact, I'll grab it in the NLT. Nah, I'll just read it from the King James. Let's read that real quick before we proceed. I'm, and, and I'm really looking forward to part two because that's when the real meat comes out because a lot of people will watch the first part and then kind of ignore the second part. The second part is always when the, the, the good stuff comes out. But uh, where are we going to? Oh, yeah, John 7 and 35. And it simply reads, Then said the, the JOOs, oh, I hate that word, among themselves, among themselves, whither will he go that we will not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed? Among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles and the NLT it says, will he go to our people dispersed? To, or do he go to the to our people dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Basically, so that's what it was talking about. All right, so back into the book. He hereto had been one of the most active persecutors of the band. Right, and he was that part is true. Saul's persecuting his own people until the Lord came to visit him and blinded him, then gave him back his sight and sent him on his mission. And why? Because Paul was a chosen vessel. That's what we, you know, we at the Great Millstone 
are always talking about the elect, right? You can't separate the elect from the Lord, no matter what they do. They are already been chosen from the foundation of the earth. That's Ephesians, the first chapter, all right? So, so well did Paul do his work within four centuries, the great empire which had subjugated the Palestine along with the half of the world was heaped up ruins and, and the law which went forth from Zion became official religion of Rome. And no, and Rome actually created Christianity with some, was a, a uh, Catholicism was a mixture of our laws mixed with paganism. That's what Christianity is. This was the beginning of our dominion in the world. All right. So he's, no, he's, so he's admitting that this were Israelites, that, that, uh, uh, Constantine and all those people, they were Israelites. That's what this is admitting. All right. But it was only the beginning from the time, from this time forth, your history is little more than a struggle for mastery between your own old pagan spirit and our Jewish spirit. Half of your wars, great and little, are religious wars fought over the interpretation of one thing or another in our teachings. You are sooner broke, you, you are no sooner broke free from your primitive religious simplicity and attempt to practice the pagan Roman learning that Luther armed with our gospel arose to go down and re enthrone our heritage. Take the three principal revolu revolutions of modern times, the French, American, and Russian. Uh, what are they but the triumph of the Jewish idea of socialism, political and economic justice? And basically that, that Jewish takeover, meaning the name still is the Khazars. In the 6th century, when the Khazarian uh, 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 mafia decided when they were forced to choose between Christianity and, and Islam, they chose to, to, to follow uh, the, 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 you know, and become Jewish and they didn't follow the law, statutes, commandments. They actually chose to follow the, they didn't follow the Bible. They followed the, uh, the Babylonian Talmud, which is their true book. The Bible is a front because the Bible has no mate to it. You can't, you can't say you're the people of the, of the Lord and then have a whole nother book that you, all your elders and leaders are learned in. See, the rabbi has to be learned in the Talmud, and the Talmud has some dark, that's your dark paganistic uh, religion. The Bible is actually uh, uh, the order sent down from heaven itself. But uh, this is uh, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, whom I believe is among us today. 34 and 16, and it reads, Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth it have commanded, and his spirit it have gathered them. All right, so you can't claim to be the people of the Lord and have a whole nother book of worship and a whole nother doctrine because the Talmud is a complete and total contrast to the Bible. All right? complete and total contrast all right so uh that's gonna that's gonna be it for this lesson in the next lesson you know part two we're going to uh i plan to provide um the evidence of of name stealing and culture stealing and the whitewashing of an iconoclasm so with that, I'm going to give all praises, all honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wakaha Kwadash, Kwam, Yasser Allah, Shalom.